Hey guys, this is Jake, and thanks for coming to check out this tutorial on occlusion culling inside of Unity. So what is occlusion culling? Occlusion culling is the way in which um, we can tell the system not to render things that the camera does not see. So it saves a lot of uh, memory not having to worry about um, geometry that is behind the camera or uh, you know just just off screen um, and it reduces draw calls so it will help make your system a, a bit more efficient now in order to use occlusion calling it has to be on objects that are static or within um, static volumes um, so here first we're going to go over how to make uh, certain objects static and then apply occlusion culling to them um, then we can visualize that. So here in Unity, I have a bunch of these elongated cubes all set up around the camera. And in order to make uh, them static, I just select one of the cubes, and then over here in the inspector window, I can make it static. Now, if uh, you want it to be static but still um, have light mapping and everything to it, or and not have light mapping to it, then you want to remove light map static. Um, but yeah, so we'll we'll just remove that for right now. So if you want to have lighting baked onto your object, then you keep light map static checked. But here we're not gonna, we're not going to worry about any type of light baking. So I'm actually going to select all of my cubes and apply the exact same thing. Remove the light map static. So here we see occluder static and occlude static. Um, now generally occluder static is um, for objects that may hide other objects and occlude e, um, is used for things like glass where you may want to occlude the object but it lets the system know that you may be able to see through it um, so you may not necessarily want to occlude what is behind that object. Um, so now that everything is set to static, we can go to Window and Occlusion Culling. And over here, we can go to our Bake Options. Um, and then your smallest occluder, smallest hole. This is all relative to how, how large a piece is that you have. So if you have some smaller pieces, you can use um, you know, a, a, your smallest occluder as being a bit smaller if you have a lot more bigger geometry type meshes. Um, and want to uh, reduce larger sections of, uh, of your scene, you can bump that up. So I'm fine with these default settings, um, then we'll hit bake. And depending on how many objects are in your scene, um, it, can, it can take a little while, but obviously since I only have a handful of cubes, it's not going to take very long at all. So from what uh, you can see, a bunch of these cubes just disappeared and it's like, okay, why in the world did that happen? Um, but if I click on my inspector, they come back. So over here in Occlusion, you can go to the Visualize tab. And then if you grab your camera, you look through the camera view. And everything that's inside of the camera view looks correct. However, in the scene window in Unity, you can see that all the cubes that are within the uh, the view of the camera are actually being turned on and off. Um, so th this is what occlusion culling does, is it, sh it breaks up the scene in a way that um, if, uh, if the objects are within the, the field of the camera, it will turn them on, turn them off, um, and, and it's a really great way to reduce those draw calls um, and just make your system a bit faster. Now, as we can see in the scene, these big, how there's this big yellow cube through here, that is our occluded area. So if we go to like, the small occluder of one, you can see it broke the entire scene up into a lot more smaller cubes. So again, if you have you know, lots of little details that you want to break up within the scene, within your scene, um, that you want to occlude um, more um, precisely, then you can use a, a smaller uh, occluder size. 
Another thing that you can use is occlusion calling volumes. And those are under under rendering and occlusion can't be normally. There we go. So I'm gonna make a new empty game object first. And then I'm going to go to Google rendering and I'm going to add an occlusion area. So with an occlusion area, you can grab each one of the little handles on it and make the occlusion sound a bit bigger. So this is great for uh, level layouts that, that might be a bit more closed off, um, like a, a big office building, um, you know, some, something with a lot of rooms, because they can, then you can section off each one of those rooms, and you can have uh, the, the room turn on and off, uh, depending on if, uh, if there's limited um, visual, visualization on that specific room. So here are my occlusion uh, volumes all set. I'll rebake my occlusion. And you can see right here that extra large, oops, extra large box that we have through here makes a, a much larger occlusion zone. Um, and if I change that even more, you can see it, it widen that up. So again, if you have if you have uh, lots of stuff that you want to cover, um, and then I'll have pretty much all turn on at the same time, you can do that with the um, occlusion uh, zone areas, with the with the occlusion areas. Um, but it's also great when you have objects that um, can move. So if you have a, a bunch of enemies in one room, and you don't want to have to worry about rendering them when they're not seen, um, using these Occlusion zones um, can help with with some of that, uh, especially on your animator. Uh, there there's some settings in there um, for if uh, if the object is not seen to stop its animations. So that might be um, something else that's useful to speed up uh, the the workflow um, and the um, uh, the processing power, uh, make your game a bit more efficient. So hopefully this was helpful for you and uh, will speed up your gameplay a little bit. Uh, makes it um, so much easier to add in tons more detail just because of uh, having those reduced draw calls um, and just being a bit more memory efficient. Um, so thanks for checking this video out.